sound is up and we're live hello everyone welcome back to our regular monday night monster jam time frame on monday night <laughs> yeah <laughs> hopefully you caught last friday's show if you did not please go back not right now go back later and check out all the shows we've got we've got 14 of them up there for you tonight is number 15. <laughs> Yes, and one of our awesome audience members let us know on our Facebook uh, Monster Jam page that we had reached the thousand mark. We did. We, yes, awesome. So let's keep that subscriber number just going up and up, and um, and that means I got to do my job and start preparing some magnets for you guys yep. for the giveaway, which I will do. Um, so that's the good news. Um. Hopefully you guys had a great 4th of July weekend. And um, Sam, how was your 4th? Uh, mine was good. I just went down to uh, uh, my old, uh, the old town where I grew up in and visited a bunch of friends of mine. And we just barbecued a bunch. Uh, a couple of my friends watched Independence Day, which was a treat. Like, especially yes. that that sequence where it's like Brett Spiner performing surgery on that alien. Yeah. I like, I watched that. I'm like, oh my God, that's just as disgusting as it was when I was a kid. Like, it looks like he's handling raw chicken. It's yeah. It's disgusting. <laughs> that like was silico. fun. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was fun. Um, Yeah, and uh, that was pretty much it. Just catching up with a lot of people, drinking a bunch of wine. Awesome. Good time. Awesome. That sounds like fun, man. Oh. Yeah, it sounds like fun. Um. We had a good fourth. Uh, hopefully you guys did as well. And um, it's been a crazy weekend for me. Just celebrated my son's 10th birthday. He's uh, had a great day. We had an awesome day with him. And um, of course, my amazing wife just made us some, uh, what were those called? Uh, lettuce wraps. Some amazing lettuce wraps. I just chowed down before the show. So I'm ready to rock, thanks to my wife. <laughs> Thank you, baby. So, okay, uh, here we are. And tonight's show, what we are doing is I'm going to share with you guys how I prep a latex mask and how I base coat it. Because I get this question probably more than anything else um, for some odd reason. I think because it's just, you know, there's really no specific rules and regulations and ways to do it. There's many different ways to do it. And I think that there's really been no uh, set established video on it or something. I mean, there's, there's a few, there's a few things out there. Uh, Ed Edmonds did one for distortions and, uh, but he does it with latex and water and, and house paint. I mean, that's one way you can always do it. So, um, and we talked about it on the last show. I think there was a question about it. Yep. There's always seems to be questions about this uh, process, especially with the, prosade and the way I do it. So I'm going to kind of just run down how I do it. But before we base coat the mask, I'm actually going to get into showing you guys uh, how I burn uh, problem areas away. So warts or little cracks from the mold or whatever, because oftentimes your molds can get little cracks over time, like little fissure cracks. In fact, the mask I have in front of me has that. Um, in a few spots and little warts and things like that just quickly how to get rid of them and then how to properly clean the latex which is something a lot of people don't know about um a lot do and a lot do not so i'm going to share that with you tonight um and whatever else so we'll see um and that's about it uh i think is there anything else we need to cover sam oh you know what before we go into all that which we'll get to uh, let's just see who's with us tonight. Who's joining us? Yeah, so returning tonight, we have Magneto Creations, uh, Chris Dawson, got My Masks and Horror Collectibles, Mikey Severe's Spook Show, mm -hmm. Andrea Hernandez, first time watcher and viewer, uh, nice, Andy, thank you. Andy Neal. Uh, nice, this is nice. actually the first time that they're catching the stream live tonight. Nice, thank Andy you Neal. for watching. Yep, yep. Uh, I'm not vintage. I'm grumpy, grumpy, grumpy. Uh, Neil Kazama returning again. Awesome. Kevin Young, Michael Strapback, Jason Giaconetti, John Eubank, My Mental Factory, and yeah, that's everybody that I see so far. Dom Draven. Sorry if I missed you. Let us know in the chats if you guys are here. We'll uh, shout you out. Yeah, we'll give you a shout out if you join us. Ah, uh, JB Cunningham just uh, awesome. just signed in. <laughs> awesome. 
Cool. Well, great to have all you guys with us tonight again. And um, like we said before, we just reached a thousand subscribers. So thank you so much for that. Um, we appreciate that. Uh, if you know anyone that would like this show or benefit from this show in any way, um, you know, they're into monster making, masks, maquettes, whatever, you know, painting, uh, sculpting. We are here. And, you know, these are good lessons, uh, I believe, for, you know, all sorts of levels, you know, beginner all the way to pro. So hopefully, uh, you know, someone that's interested and wants to uh, check out these YouTube live demonstrations. So uh, please join, uh, please share with them. And of course, keep coming back and joining us. And um, I think that's about it. I think mm -hmm. we're going to ready mm -hmm. to rock into it. I'll just keep babbling otherwise, like an idiot. All right. <laughs> cool. So the mask we have is a vampire that I sculpted and I sell on my site. <clears throat> and, you know, it's... It, it's just latex. It's just a latex pole, kind of thick latex pole that I did a while back. But you notice a few things with it. Number one being, actually, can I move this mic back? Sure. Just a little. Yeah, there we go. Cool. So <clears throat> for starters, the mask has a few problem areas in the nose, some warts. There's even a few holes I didn't. I didn't see that. We could even get into how I fix that stuff. Um, okay, so, but you see all this white chalky dust that's stuck to it from the mold. There is a way to contend with that um, and, and get rid of all that and, and get the raw, because there's like a dusty quality. Anyway, the mask is also dirty because it's just hanging up on a shelf for a while. So uh, we want to clean it, obviously, before we base coat it. Um, so... The first thing I want to show you guys, and this is a bit of a, of a tricky process and something that I'm going to share with you that I do, but uh, I, I want everyone watching, I take no, <laughs> no, be careful with these techniques. These are not techniques for a young kid or for a young adult or anyone that doesn't know what they're doing with this stuff. If you're young, Make sure you're supervised, uh, you know, make sure you know what you're doing, handling these things, and we can't take any responsibility if you get injured or you cause harm to yourself, that's on you. So we take no responsibility in that. So, but I'm going to share with you a technique that is called burning, and I'm only going to do a little bit of it. So for instance, let's just take a quick look at the mask here. And there are, there's, there's kind of a, a very fine crack going from the gum because there, there's a crack in my mold in the front here. Um, you know, I don't know how that got there. It, it just probably over time or something. So there's that. And then there's these little warts, you know, under the teeth. There's these little warts that don't belong there. There's one on a tooth. There's, you know, in, in, in this nostril over here. Just stuff that doesn't, wasn't there when I sculpted it. And we don't want it there. You know, so what I have in front of me here is a burning tool. And this tool is something I picked up on um, uh, eBay. And, you know, you, there's a whole bunch of wood burner tools you can find. But this one in particular, uh, I really like. It's a workhorse. It works really well. And it goes to like thousand degrees which is insane which you know you don't need it that high but I do I go pretty high with it um, for burning stuff down uh, 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 uh. let me just find some of these and so what hap what's cool about this is there's a whole bunch of different tips that they make that come with it and what's great about that and and by the way when you are burning do not do this indoors like I'm about to do do not do this indoors. I'm, I can't, I, you know, we have no way to show you other than this to at least demo it. And, I, and the, thankfully, I don't have a lot to burn on here. I'm not burning a seam. There's no seam because this was a one-piece mold, by the way. This mask comes out of a, just a one-piece mold. So I don't have a lot to burn, just little things. So we're not going to be creating, you know, too much fumes in here and, and breathing. And when you burn, you also 
should wear a respirator. So, because it is harmful to burn latex rubber and breathe those fumes. Again, I'm not going to be able to talk to you through a respirator. So, we're just going to do a little burning. Just going to show you just a touch of it, how it works, what I do, and then we'll be done. We're not going to sit here and burn things to death. <laughs> so, when I do this, I usually do it outside in the open air and um, where I'm not breathing the fumes. Okay. So, you can turn on the burner. You know, and then you have this adjustment here, and the higher you turn it, you know, the higher the number, and, you know, that's like 6,000 degrees, this is going to be like 7,000 degrees, 8, you know, you can see the tip getting red hot at a 1,000, over, you know, go over a 1,000, like look at the tip of that thing, <laughs> yeah, so this thing is not a tool to mess around with. Or play around with, um, and because uh, it can seriously do some damage to you. And um, so before though, okay, cool. It does cool pretty quick, which is good too. Before I do that, I'm gonna switch this tip out real quick because that's not the tip I want. This tip that I have on here is actually really, really great for carving details back in, like wrinkles and stuff. So if, let's say you had a seam line here and you had wrinkles in your mask, you could come in and carve with the edge. And, and carve in like, you know, wrinkles right over the, the seam line after you burn it down flat. So there's other ways to obviously take care of seams on masks, like Dremels and stuff, but the Dremel tool will usually not only take away all your detail, uh, which sucks, it makes a flat spot, but, it, but you can see it later too. And, and you don't want that. You wanna put the detail back in. And you can do that by patching, but that's a major pain in the butt. Patching is not easy, especially redetailing patch over it's 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 tricky it's it's hard so this tool really makes it easy um i need to grab something I'm sorry okay so uh, i need to grab this i forgot this this tool is very important this is just a wire brush and as you're burning, when you start burning a lot of latex, you'll get a white buildup on here. And to clean it off, you would just use this. So you have to burn for a little bit, and then you have to clean this off. And then burn to clean off, burn, clean off. Okay? Now, the other thing is, oh, shoot, I forgot something else. <laughs> Let's see if I can make it work with scissors. Scissor screwdriver trick. The old scissor screwdriver trick. Remember that one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't do this at home. Don't be stupid. <laughs> don't follow what we do. No, um anyway, I just, I don't have a screwdriver on hand. So what this does is it just tightens on the new piece and you know, it doesn't have to be super tight though. It just makes contact so that it can turn on. Okay. So there, that worked. Yay. Um all right, so just to illustrate and show you how this works, uh, I'm going to turn on the burner again. And now we've got a new tip on there. You saw how fast and easy that was to do. And I'm going to turn it up to like 7,000, somewhere in there. 70, okay. And we'll try it out. So what, what I do is right here I have this really fine crack, you know, going, uh, going through here. And so I can come in here like this and literally just, you know, sort of very gently swipe at it and it'll just kind of burn that down and away. And then here going down the nose, there's a bit of a crack, almost sort of disappears minute there. I think it's right there. And so you can see how easy like these crack and see this little wart right here? We can just literally toast him. I'll blow those nasty rubber fumes away from me here. Again, don't do this in your garage like I'm doing. Don't do this in your studio or whatever. I mean do this outside. <laughs> Always. Um, 
I'm only doing this as a demo because we don't can't really show you any other way unless you know we had all of our camera equipment outside, which we don't have. You know, we don't have long enough cables and wires, and it'd be a pain in the butt. So, I'm showing you guys this, but again, do this with extreme caution and you know don't do this while you're tired and falling asleep late at night because you could then fall asleep and burn a hole right into your arm <laughs> so don't do that either you know um so just take you know <clears throat> respect the tool <laughs> that's all i can say respect the tool so you see i had some white stuff so i'm just now like getting rid of that just cleaning off with with a wire brush just clean it off And now when you have a big seam line or, or a decent seam line on your mask, it will take several passes to get, to get it to go away with the burning. It won't just be one quick pass like this and, oh, voila, it's all perfect. No, you'll still see a, a, a seam line. So you have to go over and over it a couple times to get it, and then, and then you'll be good. But this, the good thing about this is it doesn't do the kind of damage that a Dremel tool does which a Dremel tool will just, you know, eat up the mask and the details and everything. But it's cool. I can get in here and get these, you know, unwanted warts that you don't want in your mask. And it looks like that crack extended itself all the way down into the bottom tooth here, too. And there's some warts like under here. You can put your finger behind, but just be real cautious you don't burn a hole through into your finger. Because this stuff will go right through latex, no problem. I suppose if you needed to burn, you know, like uh, um, holes in your mask or something, you could do that. But just, yeah, you got, you got to be really careful with this. I'm going to get rid of that problem there. You see we have a few holes right here in the mask. So we're going to try to maybe get some. I have some patch mi mixed up, which I'll introduce you guys to. We can kind of fix that. So this is all about prepping the mask before painting and base coating. That's what this is. All prep work to get it ready. You know, every mask you have to prep something it's it's almost impossible to get like you know a hundred percent perfect casting every time so it's not going to happen latex has air bubbles in it now i'm not going to burn this 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 big chunk here could be burned down what well, maybe a little bit um i just it'll create too much smell and smoke and i'm already don't want to burn too much but i'll come back and do it later even through the base coat i can do it um and get it later and do it outside because it's going to create a lot of smoke and don't want to breathe too much of this. I just want to quickly show you guys this and be done with it because I don't like doing this in indoors, you know. I'm just looking at any little, you know, cracks or weird things uh, that exist on this mask. Okay, now, what happens is you get this gook, gooky stuff left behind. Icky, sticky. It's going to be a little sticky, too, by the way. Wherever you burn, your mask is going to have a, a sticky uh, area. By the way, this tool, this is cool. You can, um, you can also, like, put in uh, pore texture back in, you know. Or wrinkles, especially soft wrinkles, you can almost re sculpt right into the latex. Anyway, you get the idea. So I'm going to turn this nuclear melter off here. <laughs> now, so, okay, now how do we get rid of this nasty? sticky stuff and it, it'll be sticky underneath always oh you know what I see one more problem area so sorry guys 
But how do we get rid of that is, I'm going to show you here in just a sec, but let me get this little, I just noticed a little crack here too on the side of the eye here. Very, very tiny one. Okay. All right, I think we're done. So, uh, of course, I say that and then I see something else. Christ. Oh my gosh. That's the way it goes. See, because the thing is, you know, when the light hits it, you think you got it, but then the light, you hit it with light at a certain angle and then and you don't have it. Okay, I'm going to call that done. I don't care if I see something else. Oh, there's something else. <laughs> So luckily, this thing heats up quickly. Good Lord. Sam, you're going to have to stop me because I'll just keep picking stuff apart. That's how I am. I'm, a per I'm a such a perfectionist I'm weirdo. All right, so done. I'm putting it down. I promise. Okay, so what I was going to say <laughs> is um, all this stuff, we use another thing that, again, use an extreme caution. Um, if you're going to use this product, uh and um again we take no responsibility be safe do this outside don't do this indoors um and again so what i'm using here is a product called naphtha which is very hard to find nowadays in uh stores like uh home depot and and stuff they don't sell it anymore but i've got some old stuff left around and what it does is it's a nasty chemical, obviously. Yep. Yeah. And we're not going to use too much of this either because we don't want to be breathing tons of this. So what this does is it kind of smooths out uh, the area here that we burnt and it gets rid of all that icky, gooky, slimy stuff, that burnt latex that's left over. And the only reason it's hitting hitting hard, Sam, is because we got the fan on. Right. Oh yeah, it's just blowing that's, all of it. Anyway. Yeah, that's why it's like, and that's why I don't want to use too much of this like whiffing gasoline, man. <laughs> all right, so I'm just gonna quickly hit these areas, and as you guys can see, you know, it just cleans up all that stuff, you know. And I can still see this little seam line here. So if I wanted to come back and hit it again. You know, if you still see something, you can come back with the burner. Hit it again. Yada, yada, yada. You get what I mean. What's that called one more time? It's a wood burning tool? Uh, I don't know if this is, I guess this is a wood burner. Um, but it, man, you know, most wood burners don't go that high or maybe you know i mean the ones like at the craft stores they don't go nowhere near as as high as this one does so um i get I, but i would just look up burning tool on a burner uh, maybe it's a wood burner look it up on ebay and and you can find it there um we can always put the link in the monday night monster jam facebook group, facebook yeah. group too because I can find them and put a link. I just showed it to a friend recently. So all I'm doing now is just seeing, you know, seeing a little more area that needs burning. And then I'll be happy. Okay. So um, now that we've done the burning and all that is done, stinky stuff. Uh, oh, I forgot. Oh my god. So, oh yeah. Yeah. so, okay, let me get this real quick because this is going to drive me nuts. This stupid little chunk here in the nostril. Get out of there. All right, I promise we're turning this thing off. That's it. Everyone's laughing. They're like, yeah, right. Maybe one more time watch. All right. So uh, now I'm going to clean with the naphtha. You know, again, naphtha is a very harmful chemical. Do not breathe or ingest this too much. And don't be, or at all, actually. And definitely 
don't do it indoors. Because um, again, we will not be responsible for people using this stuff incorrectly or getting hurt or injured from it. That's on you. Okay, so here we go. Now, uh, burning's done, naphtha's done, out of the way. Um, and the next thing we want to do is clean the mask, you know, and get it really nice and clean. So the way to do that is with this stuff. And this is a, <laughs> as you can see, this is like from a spice. I got this from a cooking rest, uh, cooking supply restaurant. So you can check there, you can check Amazon, you can check anywhere you want. But all it is is citric acid in powder form. So it's a powder, grain, kind of like salt, you know, the, the, the level of salt or the, or the grain of salt. And um, you don't need a lot of this. You just need a little bit of water like so. And then you can pour some citric acid powder into water, right, like that. That's plenty, a teaspoon or so. <clears throat> I'm running out. I got to get more. Uh, let's, let me grab another. Or actually, I'll use this brush with the naphtha, but let me just get the naphtha out of it. Yeah. Fire, what is it? Acid, naphtha, whatever chemical that is. This one? We're going through it tonight. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're not sure which brand that uh, wood burning tool is, right? Some folks were asking, like, oh, what, like, what brand is it? It's like, it's not know. too clear. It's just one you found on eBay, right? Yeah, just look for the red box. <laughs> You'll see it on eBay if you search burning tool, wood burner or burner. And it comes with all the different tips. They're all over eBay. You can't miss it. And, um, yeah, look for the red box. And it comes, and by the way, it comes with two of these. You'll see two of these uh, burning, burning tools and all the different tips. And it's, you know, it's cheap. It's like, I don't know, less than a hundred bucks or a hundred bucks maybe hmm. max. Um, not bad. Yeah. So what I'm doing is mixing up the citric acid. Okay. And now what I'm going to do, and again, I have to do some of this off camera. Sorry, guys. This part I can do on camera, but I'm going to have to wash it off in the sink off camera. So what I'm going to do here is just scrub the mask with citric acid and water. Okay. And citric acid is really good at eating away at that powder layer that you see, that dusty white powder layer, and bringing back the very, very underneath the, the, the raw latex that should be exposed. Because when you, and then of course this mask was sitting up on a shelf for a while, so it's a little dusty too. But this will get all the dirt and junk off of it that we don't want. And this has its own funky smell uh, to it. But the only thing is this is not harmful. Citric acid powder isn't going to harm you. It's not like acid acid or anything. It's just from oranges and stuff like that. Lemon oranges powder. It's just what's, yeah, it's just put into a powder form and then mix it into water. And, you know, citric acid is in foods and all kinds of things that we eat so it's safe 
Um, they probably do. Yeah, I'm sure it's in soda and candy and all kinds of different things, cakes and. I mean, you can buy it in the cooking rest, uh, restaurant supply places sell it. So. So all I'm doing is just scrubbing down with a chip brush, you know, just scrubbing the mask down with that mixture. And this works better than anything else. I mean, it works better than soap and water. It works better than alcohol. It works because none of those things, soap and water, alcohol, they don't take off that, that crusty, uh, dusty layer as well as citric acid can. In fact, I'm gonna dump some of this water out and make it more comfortable. All right. All right, apologies guys. I'm gonna have to jump off camera at least one more time after this real quick. I'm going to add some more citric acid powder. I got rid of some of the water. I'm just doing a more concentrated uh, version here. So Eric Mortensen in the chat was asking about, I think, this process that you're doing right now. Uh, they're asking, will 99% IPA and or acetone work as well? No. No, they won't. They just don't clean that dusty layer off at all. In fact, it can make the mask just look more chalky. And acetone is super harmful to be messing with and brushing. All, like if you did this with acetone and... It, it, acetone can go through your skin into your bloodstream. Ooh. It's horrible stuff. Jeez. And you don't want to be breathing that either. So definitely stay away from acetone. A lot of people use acetone to clean off counters and stuff, and they put it on rags and touch it and let it. That stuff is causes cancer faster than anything else I know. <laughs> so <laughs> stay away from acetone as much as you can. I mean, sometimes you know you need it for a specific thing but no it's not good for cleaning a mask off at all and either is isopropyl alcohol they don't work they won't take off the the layer that you're trying to get off which is the dusty chalky um, mold from your mold because every time you pull a latex mask from a mold because the mold is stone it pulls a little bit of the layer with it uh, every time, you know? And so that's how you get that chalky, dusty stuff that's on there in the first place is a little bit comes off onto the mask, um, which is why over time your mold will wear out and eventually your detail coat will be gone and your mask will just not look as good coming out of the mold. and. You either make a new mold off a of master or you just stop making those copies of that mask or whatever. So mask molds are definitely not a permanent forever thing. Um, if they're made very well, they can last a long time. But, um, you know, you, every time you pull a mask, you're, you're going to pull detail. So it's good to, you know, some guys take a, they make a master copy of the mask out of silicone, a material that won't shrink. And then they'll um, make new molds off that silicone master copy. And then they get the exact same size uh, out of that mold as they had originally. And that's the way to do that. So you can see I'm just scrubbing, scrubbing, scrubbing this down, making sure I get it really, really well. Let the citric acid eat into all that powder layer and get it off and now you know if you leave this and let it dry which you don't want to do the citric acid will become very sticky 
and your whole mask will be very sticky with citric acid. So you don't want that either. So, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna jump off camera really quick again, guys. I'm gonna go literally wash this off under a sink really quickly because that's all it needs, just a quick shower. I always try to avoid getting water on the inside of the mask here, the inside. I just try to run the water over top of it only and, ho and wash it off. So I'm gonna go do that and I'll be right back. Hey everybody. So while Casey's over there washing off the mask, uh, just thought I'd pop in to kind of remind everybody if you're liking what you're seeing, uh, be sure to leave a like and uh, oh, I'm this. Uh, be sure to leave a like and uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And let us know what you guys are working on right now. Like leave any questions you might have uh, in the chat right now. Um, and if you're working on anything while you're watching this or if you have it on in the background, let us know what you're working on. We always like hearing what you guys' projects are going on right now. Uh, I know Neo Kazama, you've been letting us know about, uh, or you actually posted up the final images of that thing head, the Norris head. Uh, you can see that on the Facebook group. If you're not on the Monday Night Monster Jam Facebook group yet, you can find that on Facebook and join that if you haven't. It's always a fun time. Share any projects you guys are working on right now over there. And yeah, so just let us know. Casey should be almost finished cleaning this off right now. But yeah, hope you guys are enjoying the show so far. Got the mask all clean. It's like Christmas for latex lovers. <laughs> all right, so now I've got some paper towel handy, and I can just dry. Good thing is we have a fan in the background, blowing some air. That'll help. You obviously need the mask to be dry. Um. So I just, you know, dry it off. Just keep wiping it down. Don't leave it waterlogged and stuff. You know, water is really not a great thing for masks. It's not gonna harm it just doing this, cleaning it or anything, but you don't wanna leave any area soaking wet. So try to get it after you've washed it off, just try to immediately get it dry <clears throat> okay and let's see here so those are the first few steps every mask that I make for a customer when I get an order or something like that the first thing I do is I cast the mask and once I get the casting out I go through the cleanup process and then after I've cleaned it up then I go through the prepping process we'll push that uh, we'll push the artist share a little later sure I don't know why I'm whispering to you there they can hear me <laughs> <laughs> that was weird Natural reactions. Don't tell them anything. Oh, we're doing. No, don't worry. I won't tell them. I don't tell them anything. Don't tell them, Jack. <laughs> I'm gonna push the artist share later. <laughs> I'm just acting like idiots at this point. Yeah. Okay. So, um, pretty dry. You know, I'm gonna let it naturally dry off here a little bit too but I think I've got most of it. Um, and now, of course, those were all the, we took care of the raised flaws. Uh, I see a little wart here, it's driving me crazy. Another one right here. I hate 
any flaw in there that wasn't there to begin with. I like to get rid of them. You know? If it wasn't there when I sculpted it, it shouldn't be there now. <clears throat> okay. Now I'm just going to make sure there's nothing wet on the inside here. Like, I'm always stuffing my masks with just like black trash bags, you know? They work really good just to stuff them with that. Um, holds the sh helps hold the shape. I mean, the shape holds itself, but it helps a lot. It gives it a cushion to rest on. It's cheap. It's kind of may seem cheap and weird, but it works like a charm. Some people use newspaper. I don't like it because it crinkles and can push out. I mean, when you have a thick mask, it won't, but it can do it on a thinner mask. So I don't like newspaper too much. Okay. Um, but you can see now how clean... The mask is. The, I mean, it's literally back to raw latex. You know, it, it, there's no, there's not too much dust. There might be a little piece, a little bit here and there, you know, leftover uh, areas, but it's pretty, pretty darn clean. I mean, cleaner than, than alcohol or anything else can get it for sure. I mean, I've tried everything. There might be another product out there, you know, but, but citric acid works the best that I've found. Um, okay. And so now while I'm letting this totally dry making sure that the mask is completely dry what I want to show you guys really quickly is how to patch a few problem areas and I'm gonna get up one more time sorry and get something <laughs> I'm going to introduce you guys to some mystery goop. <laughs> but, oh, my gosh. I'm going to forget everything. Mystery goop. I like that. Mystery goop. Mystery goop. Yeah. I did the classic thing. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get new water. Who knows what it is? The mystery goop. <laughs> hopefully this will be the last All right, hopefully this is the last time that I have to get up for crying out loud. All right, I had to get fresh water. I had to get my fan brush. Uh, I don't know what this stuff is called. This is I'm going to call it mystery goop. I'm sorry. I should have figured out and what this is called. Uh, but uh, an, an awesome mask maker friend of mine, Jordi Shell, introduced me to this stuff, and it is every bit as good as he said it was. Um, I need to thank Jordi for that because this mystery gorilla snot, I'm going to call it. I'm just going to call it gorilla snot. Jeez. Yeah. I don't know what this is. If someone watching knows what this is or recognizes this, great. Um, I forget what this material is, and I don't even know where to get it. I'm going to have to find out. But this mystery goop is so amazing because when you mix a little bit of latex into it, it turns it to peanut butter instantly. So this is that mixed with latex, which makes it like peanut butter, literally like peanut butter. I mean, super, super thick. And there's other things you can thicken latex with, like Cabo, but they don't work anywhere near as good as this. And the great thing about this stuff is uh, you can smooth it out with water amazingly well. So I'll have to figure out what that stuff is or find out. It almost looks like icing. It dude, icing. it's so weird. It's like it's literally like some weird rubber <laughs> gorilla snot or something harvested from gorillas noses in the misty mountains yeah it's so weird uh okay so i apologize guys i don't know what the hell material i'm using tonight <laughs> usually i would know um i just forget what it was called and, and i don't even know where it comes from i'll have to figure it out find out but okay so what i do is mix that up you know and then like i can come into 
these little hole area here, right? And just patch this, patch these. You know, so if you have any problem areas, um, you know, little holes like right here in the chin, because the one issue with latex uh, can be little air bubbles and things, little flaws. So you want to patch patch those and fix them. Don't be lazy and avoid it. Because then I'll come up and look at your mask and go, why'd you leave those air bubbles? I know those don't belong there. And then you're going to be kicking yourself. Now, I'm taking a brush with a little bit of water and just smoothing. And look how nicely that stuff just smooths out. Now, even these tricky areas here, you can take the edge of a fan brush with some water. Ruffy in the chat was saying it almost looks like rubber cement. It's not. I know, I know it does. I, I know it looks like rubber cement, guys, but it is not rubber cement. I promise you it's not. It's not. It doesn't smell like rubber cement. It, it's thicker than rubber cement, too. And, you know, you can go try to add latex to rubber, rubber cement, but you're not going to like what you get. <laughs> I don't think. I've never tried that, but this, it's crazy. Like, this stuff instantly turns the latex to peanut butter. And you just add a little latex to it. There's really no even like mix ratio. You just just eyeball it and just add a little latex in and start mixing it and you'll be blown away. It'll get super thick really fast. Like right before your eyes. It's 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 better than cabo cabo patch or any of that stuff. So anywhere that you have holes, but do, it does look like rubber cement for sure, but it's not rubber cement. Um, anywhere you have holes, you can just patch with this, you know, stuff here. And I'm not going to get too nitpicky, guys, because I have to get this base coated and show you that as well. So we'll, if I end up having any flaws I missed, I'll just come back around and patch them and, and fix them after the fact totally fine because you can patch uh, afterwards as well and then rebase coat that area but I'll try to get everything try to get what I can have time for so yeah I just fill in you know like that and of course you got to let it dry and these you know these you have areas like this push push it out with your finger on the inside you can get to it easier You can also smooth it easier if it's pushed out. Mikey Severe Spook Show says or wonders if it's hydroxyethyl cellulose. That might be what it is. I don't know. You know, uh, so uh, Jordu told me uh, that edit distortions turned him on to it. So if anyone's online that works at distortions, they would know. Because um, that's where I guess he discovered it at or was turned on to it or whatever or shown. Uh, they showed it to him there. That's what I've heard from him. So I'm going to go with that. I know we had one of the sculptors from distortions on here at one point that was working over there currently. I don't know if he's watching tonight, but he would know. That might be it. That that what he just said. Yeah, he might have nailed it. I don't know. I'm calling it gorilla snot. I think it sounds better. Huh. But you know, can't really order that off Amazon. Andy Neal says it's the underground ooze from Ghostbusters Two. Yep, that's it. Even better. He slimed me. Yeah. Yeah, boy. 
So anyway, you can see, you know, this is just the next thing you need to do is patch any of these holes. It'd be nice if one day latex could not have air bubbles in it, but that, I don't think that's happening. <laughs> just naturally does and drives us all crazy, all of us mask makers. If you're fickle like I am, you're going to sit here and patch every hole until it's perfect. So next time you ask, why do I charge so much for my mask? Now you know. Because <laughs> I put a lot of work into these things. You know? Mask makers put a ton of work into these things, and so it's a lot that um, people don't see happening to make a mask, you know. <clears throat> Even like people ask me, you know, how much to paint masks for them, or if I'll paint a commission mask. They're always a little, some are, some are not, but some are shocked by the pricing. But what they don't realize, you know, is the amount of time that actually goes into a paint job or into something like that. Time it's not, man. yeah, and it is not a couple hours. I'm not, you know, I don't slap on a base coat in a few colors um, on a mask. You know, that's just not how, how I paint a mask. And, um, you know, so like, uh, you know, if you, if you consider, you know, any decent rate times, you know, whatever, two or three, four days of painting, whatever you're putting into it, you know, it's going to be expensive. Um, it's just the way it goes. You're going you're gonna to pay the artist, you know, hourly. One thing I've learned over the years is flat, this is kind of a tip I'll share with some of you artists, flat rate pricing will do nothing more than hurt you and and keep you losing money than anything else. So you gotta be honest with yourself and charge hourly what you're worth and figure that out and get, and, but you know, a lot of times people are afraid to throw numbers out because they'll lose the job or whatever, but you gotta be honest with yourself what it takes and, and um, uh, what, what, you know, what to char properly charge for, you, for your time and for the quality that you're giving. Um, that's what they're paying you for. It's labor. It's like you go to an auto parts store. It's the parts are cheap. And then you go get the parts put in. The labor is super expensive. It's the way it is. And shouldn't be any different for an artist. So. I'm just saying don't devalue your time you know artists are, are get pretty sometimes locked into that like devaluing what their time is really worth so try not to go there if you can <laughs> of course everyone's got to start somewhere i understand that so i did as well so if you're new or beginner you gotta you gotta work your work your your name, build build a name and a reputation first before you can start charging people, you know, through the roof for paint jobs and stuff. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, there's time in, in these things. So, and it's funny because, uh, you know, I, I still learn from that, that till today. I still learn, um, sometimes I'm, devaluing my time you know and try to correct for that and not do that I'm gonna fill in this giant hole in this nose here you can fill in a big hole with this stuff if you want it's not a giant hole it's just a little hole but where that wart was in there now it looks like he's got a booger <laughs> Try to get rid of that. 
so yeah this is part of the process you know to to get a mask uh back to 100 percent. you know you try to cast it and get it as perfect as possible and nice as possible but they're not always going to be perfect out of the mold so you're going to have air bubbles and things that you have to fix so you want to take care of that especially for your customer spending their hard money earn money with you supporting you you give them the best quality you can give them and if you're like me you don't have a seamer sitting in your studio seaming stuff for you and doing all that i do it all myself molding casting um, just prefer to handle that myself for the most part. Sometimes I'll get somebody. Anyhow, so yeah, this stuff works so great. I mean, I've been meaning to call Jordu and tell him thank you. <laughs> So if George is seeing this at all or watching, thank you so much, man. This stuff is killer. Such a, such a great hatching material. Um, um, I'm just quickly looking around for problem areas here that need to be fixed. And I'll try not to get too fussy on you guys on the live stream here with fixing every nook and cranny but i you know i'm gonna go through the trouble of base coating the mask i want to make sure it's good good enough to go this will probably just be a keeper for me or something that you know i'll paint and put in the studio or something <clears throat> okay so i think we're looking pretty solid and i'm going to stop anyway because we don't have time to wait for it to dry forever let me get one last one i promise i'll stop after this because <laughs> this may not be the most fun exciting thing to watch but it's definitely uh part of the process and you should uh, take care of these problem areas okay i think that's good uh, i'm gonna not look at it or something because then i won't see any problems <laughs> okay so I'm going to let some of that dry. And um, I think tonight it would be best because I really want to get to the base coating and show you guys as much as possible. I think for tonight we'll, and because I'm going to be honest with all you guys watching, I don't even have an artist picked out for Artist Share tonight. I just didn't have time to, to do that today and think about it. So I don't want to be caught off guard um, with that. So instead of that, let's just go right into... Oh my God, do I have stuff on my nose? <laughs> Let's go right into questions. Sure. And I'm sorry, we'll, we'll do Artist Share next Monday. Um, let me have some time to think about somebody and, and pick them out and get a piece and get all ready with it. It's been a little bit hectic today. So uh, let's jump into questions, especially because there may be some questions about the, all these processes that I've been showing you and, and uh, or the process I'm showing you. And um, I'd love to answer some of that. Yeah. So our first question uh, comes to us from, I'm not vintage, I'm grumpy. And this was a question that was actually asked earlier in the stream before we, uh, before you started getting to all this. Uh, they were wondering uh, if you were going to be using ProAid NoTac for uh, what you were doing tonight. ProAid NoTac? Not ProAid. <laughs> ProAid. Pro uh, is it ProAid? ProAid. ProAid, Pro yeah. That's what they mean. Okay. Um, it's this stuff here. Um, no, not, uh, I won't be using NOTAC. Uh, you can use NOTAC, but I'll be just using original ProSaid, and I have just, just enough left to base coat one more mask. So I need to order that and citric acid tomorrow. <laughs> but yes, ProSaid original. Um, I actually like the mask to be a little sticky and tacky afterwards because I like it to grab those next, the first layers of paint. And that I put on it grabs them and and sticks really well um, but no however 
you can use no tack rosé for sure i haven't tried it so i would assume it's the same just dries without the stickiness so yeah should be good all right and our next question uh for the night comes from craig vance Craig is wondering, does using the burner leave any shiny finish in the burn areas? I know you mentioned that with the Dremels. It does. If you look at the mask, you'll see, like on the bridge of the nose and stuff, it'll leave it shiny. But it doesn't matter once you base coat it. Once you base coat it, the shine goes away. Or once you start painting over these areas and, and do all the layers, you'll never, you'll never see it. It'll disappear. So you don't it will have a shiny shiny area there but you don't have to worry about it it will it'll be gone once you base coat and you do all the rest yep all right and our third question comes from joe noble uh joe wonders can you pre-mix the goop that you're using with latex in a large batch yes or do you wait until you're working to mix you can do it either way this little batch I mixed several weeks ago, and it's still good. And that's another reason why I like this so much better than Cabo Patch, which Cabo Patch, for you guys that don't know, is Prosade mixed with Cabasil, which is ground glass, which is another harmful thing for you to breathe because it Cabo Cabasil is so light. It's ground up glass that is so light it floats in the air, and then you can breathe it in, and it's not you know harmful for your lungs very harmful because it's ground glass so um there's that danger with that stuff obviously and then of course um you know you mix in some latex or whatever to do cabo patch or just prosade but anyway the point being um that stuff you can save in a cup as well but i find it doesn't last as long it it and um so this stuff has been like pretty much miracle goop <laughs> uh for me and yeah it's still just fine i just mixed this a couple weeks ago and it's still great so yeah all right and our next question comes from shelly moth shelly moth asks do you hang the mask after pulling it or stuff it and put it on a stand i find that hanging it can distort it mm -hmm. it will distort it hanging masks will distort it because you are oops i gotta be careful i'm touching you're doing you can see here like let's say i, I hang it you're gonna pull and when they okay so when you pull a mask out of a mold it's not dry so when when the inside may be pretty dry and ready to pull and it might be pulling away from the mold which is a sign that it's ready to pull out and when you pull it out the mask will be very whitish and still maybe even possibly damp and um so you want to let it dry for a few days. And the best thing to do is immediately stuff it with trash bags, soft trash bags, and um, carefully, gently push it down just a little bit till it's in a spot where it will stay. Check that it's in proper shape and looks like your sculpture did. If, if any area is sucked in or something weird, stuff it out a little with more trash bags. Um, just get it in the right shape, put it on something stand like this and let it dry like that because hanging it you're the because of gravity and then the, the latex isn't cured it's going to weight down naturally <clears throat> naturally excuse me and then you're going to have this weird deformed area that dries like that and then latex once it dries it has a memory so it's going to stay like that and it's not going to ever go back to normal so you want it in the most natural position that the original sculpture was in, which stuff it, put it on a pole, and make sure it stays there, and it's going to stay there, and which it should, just like this one is now, and walk away and let it dry all day. Come back the next day or two, and you're, you should be ready to go. All right. All right, and that actually... Oh, wait, there's actually one more question that popped up in the chat. Uh, it's from Michael Strapek. Hope that's how you pronounce your name. Sorry. Uh, Michael asks, oh, this is a multi part question. Okay. Okay. Casey, been wondering your mask cleanup and prep method. So, this is super, or been watching your mask cleanup and prep method. So, this is super helpful right now. I know we're not on airbrushing tonight, but my question is do you have a tip or trick on how to deal with the buildup of pressure in the cap of the airbrush where the tiny hole is? 
there a certain way the cap needs to sit? Or could it be something with the paint viscosity? Or could it be something with the paint viscosity? I find that I'm constantly having to wipe that hole from the paint and pressure building up. Pressure build up. Yeah. Hmm. Could it be something to do with... Uh... I'm trying to think what's going on. Because with an airbrush, there shouldn't be any pressure at the nozzle where the paint comes out. There should be no pressure until you push down the button and air comes out. So there should be no air flow of any kind going through to that part of the airbrush uh, until you push the trigger, if I'm understanding you correctly. Because um, I don't have any pressure buildup at the tip of the gun uh, where the paint comes out ever um, until I push down and let air through, pass through that airway to the to the needle, to the end of the needle, the tip. So I don't know what's going on with your airbrush because it shouldn't, if, if that's what's happening, it shouldn't, ha that should, that's not normal. Um, and I don't know why that's happening unless there's just some leak or some way that the air is getting through to the chamber before you're even pushing down on that, the button mm. the, the to let the air in. I, maybe something's, misaligned something or not hose, correct or, or yeah. I, I don't know you know without seeing your airbrush um also what kind of airbrush is he using i'm wondering I'm not sure yeah. and is it like a pash ah is it a i want a double action single action what is it but regardless it doesn't matter really because it shouldn't be doing that if that's what it's doing um maybe even to what kind of paints are you using what kind of paints like but the could... paint isn't going to be a pressure issue you know the uh -huh. paint is just paint so it's not gonna, it's not gonna have any um, effect on the pressure problem he's talking about, because mm -hmm. that's coming through his compressor to through his hose into the gun. So, uh, but you know, you bring up a good point though, like thicker paints. If the paints are thick, they're gonna be harder to spray through mm. naturally. Um, so that's why rubber cement is such a pain in the butt to spray through a gun. You have to really thin the heck thin out of it. Of and, it yep. and even then it doesn't, it's, it's not a paint that sprays super fine. It sprays kind of in a grainy style. Um, what was the other question, part of this question? Um, After the pressure pretty thing? Pretty much constantly having to wipe the hole from the paint and pressure building up. Is there a way the cap needs to sit, or could it be something with the paint viscosity? That was pretty much. Uh, the I yeah, build up I would, of pressure was the main part of it. Yeah, I'd be curious what kind of brush it is, and how it is 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 the air constantly flowing through it, like to the needle point, it without you pushing the button down. I, that's what I'd be curious about. Because if so, then something's defective or not sitted right, or put put together right in the brush, or something's up. Because it shouldn't do that. You shouldn't have any air reaching the end of that brush until oh, you push oh, oh, the button. Oh. He's talking about the. He's not talking about the tip of the gun. He's saying he's talking about the top with a paint cap, where the tiny hole is on top of the gravity cup. Oh, is is the tiny hole clogged? That could be. If it, it's clogged, yeah. it, there's a tiny hole. That hole needs to be cleaned and opened. If that hole is clogged and you airbrush, you can launch your cap into the air. Like it'll launch because of the pressure. It'll. I've had. Ca I've had a cap. I didn't know it was dirty. It just pop. That. Yeah. Hole, yeah. That hole. The little. There's a little hole in the top of the cap that uh -huh. fits over the paint cup. If that hole is clogged, you can build up enough pressure. You launch the cap into the into your roof. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've literally boom like shot one off like a firework. <laughs> so, uh, especially if you have a high pressure, if that's what he's talking about. So clean. Make sure that hole is clean. If that is clean and it's doing it, I. I have no idea what, why it would be. Maybe your pressure's too high. You know, what kind of pressure is he spraying at? Shouldn't be more than 35, 40 yeah. PSI. However much you'd, what, fill a, what is it, a tire in a car with. That yeah, I mean, you can't even oh. go higher than that. You'll butt, you'll burst your airbrush hose anyway, mm -hmm. too. So, <laughs> so, but yeah, let us know more if you can. Like, you know, is that hole open? Is it closed? You know, if it's closed with paint, clean it stick a toothpick through there or something, clean it with a, a stiff brush, get that open. That hole needs to be open so that the, the pressure doesn't build up in there. Cause what you'll get also is maybe like back bubbling and stuff going on, but that also check the front of the airbrush, make sure it's clean. Yeah. 
Yep, yep. Is that it? Uh, yeah, he says, oh yeah, it does that, or it does that periodically, I guess, with the pressure. Mm. Is there a better way to limit it from building up like that? What kind of airbrush is it? I don't know. Can you tell Here, us yeah, what kind Mi of airbrush? Yeah, Michael, let us know what airbrush you're using. Mm -hmm. and we'll, we'll get back to you. We yeah. actually have uh, one more question from Ben Hernandez. Oh, okay. Uh, ben asks, uh, any chance you and Norman Cabrera can do something together? Like as, or as even have him on as a guest of the show? <laughs> no. Heck yeah, man. Um, I talked to Norman about it actually already. Um, yeah, he wants to. We, we, we discussed it. We got to find um, a time and a place. He's been kind of busy lately with some stuff. Um, I don't know about doing something on the show together. That would be tricky. Because um, where we shoot this, by the way, it's in my home studio. And it's not um, a huge space. It's small. So, um, And with two hours of time, it's hard to fit in something, you know, with two people to be a little tricky, but I do have special guests. I've talked to uh, Norman, Jordu, Steve Wang, everybody. And you know, everybody's got really busy schedules. So I'm going to try to get them in when they're available and have them on the show. I know Jordu expressed coming on as well. So, and, and being in the studio with us actually, because some people want to do it from their house, you know, just join us, uh, you know, that way. And others will do it in person, which would be awesome. So we'll have a good time. But yeah, it's being talked about on the side. You know, I got to hit them all up again and, and schedule them. It's all about scheduling. It's all about <laughs> scheduling. Um, yeah, so there was, thank you. Oh, no, there was one last question from Joe Noble. It's a really short one. It's okay. uh, favorite vintage mask company. <laughs> That's a tough question because, <laughs> um, you know, I, 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 I have to go. I... Jeez, I have to go with Be Something. I have to go with Be Something Studios because it is the one that inspired me when I was a little kid. I saw this Melted Man mask, which I have up here hanging, but that's not the right color. They painted it wrong. It's I, I asked them to paint it the right way, and they gave me that, and I was like, oh, come on. Uh, anyway, Be Something Studios, which is now Zagoni Studios, as everyone knows, that, that knows masks. Be something in the early '80s, uh, evil unicorn, melting man, and 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 masks like that just left an imprint on me forever. Um, but I don't want to dis, uh, not dis, but I don't want to not acknowledge some of the ones also like Distortions and and uh, Topstone. Of course, Topstone is iconic. I mean the masks production of the mass was hor horrible but you know they were like trash little diaper bags but and 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 whatnot but the the original top stone art and all the top stone masks man they they you know those are heavy influencers but for me personally in the early 80s the ones that hit me the most was uh be something uh fang face and you know all these big teeth and monsters and stuff i mean I I saw the Don Post stuff too, like you know the the Star Wars and all that. And I was like, it was cool and all, but what really drew me in was Be Something, man. They had a look and style to their masks like no other, and you know seeing all these big sharp teeth and blood and gore and all that, you know all the stuff they did and and um, distortions too did a lot of the gore and blood and stuff. But yeah, those are Be Something's the one. That's the one because uh, it is. The reason why I, when I first got started, I was doing all these melted creatures and things and <laughs> had that style to my stuff where it's all melting and weird stuff. Like that, that's all because of that Be Something Studio melted my brain as a kid. <laughs> so, yeah, that would be it for sure. Good questions, by the way. Yeah, Thank you, guys. Awesome. Um, okay, so we will, let's jump back um, to. Uh, base coating because I think you know this should have had enough time to you know properly dry most mostly I mean I do see one hole though and I knew this would happen that might need my attention with another pass um, so let me get that real quick here you, the one thing about this it's you know you, you do have to go over you, you may have to go over 
a hole again two or three times because it'll shrink a little bit. Um, but not as bad as uh, Prozade uh, Cabo Patch would shrink. That's, that's for sure. So this stuff definitely um, does not shrink nearly as much as uh, Cabo Patch would. You guys know what Cabo Patch Cabo Patch, once again, for those that don't know, it's all it is is Prozade mixed with Cabasil and maybe a little bit of latex or no latex at all sometimes, depending on what your preferences are. Some people don't like that and some people do. I'm going to call that good because we have to move on. Now, um, base coating, base coating. So, a lot of people like to use um, chip brushes. You know, these cheap brushes before, before they're cut down like this. This one is a two-inch that's chopped down for scrubbing. But, you know, they come with bristles like that, yay long. They come in one-inch, half-inch, two-inch. Usually, usually people use a one inch brush and base coat. I don't like them for base coating. I don't use them because I find that the bristles are so thick and heavy. They just, it just doesn't go on well. So I use, instead I use, this one's got powder in it, <laughs> but I use these artist, cheaper artish, uh, uh, I can't talk, cheaper artist brushes, <laughs> artish, what's an artish? I don't know. So artist brushes and, uh, you know, like wide ones like this, you know, soft bristles. These work really well for, for base coating a mask um, if you're brushing it on. And we're going to brush it on tonight. We're not going to do um, like airbrush it on or anything like that, which you, you can do, but we're going to go ahead and brush it on. So what I'm going to do is start by sort of mixing, um, you know, a base coat. And I'm going to use cheap. I'm going to show you guys that you can just use cheap acrylic paint. You know, you don't need anything fancy to base coat a mask. So these are just one dollar, maybe a dollar twenty a bottle. Some of these you can buy at Target. Some of the colors, you know, you'll find at um, you'll you'll find a better selection of colors at um, uh, say, you know, a hobby craft store, Michaels or Hobby Lobby or something like that. Uh, but the primary colors are usually a target even, the, the, the uh, Delta Ceram coats. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is just start with some white, I guess. And these are thick, these are non-airbrushable paints. They're thick acrylics, as you'll see. So what I like to do is just start by sort of mixing uh, some sort of base coat color. Now, as I mentioned, there's there's um, there's other ways to base coat masks. I mean, th there's the distortions method, which is well known from distortions at Edmonds, where you take a cup of equal cups. Like let's say let's say these are your cups, right? You would take a cup of what, this thing almost full with, well, Ed likes to do almost full, but you can go full. Cup of water, and then you take another cup exactly the same size, and you fill it with latex that you cast your mask with, liquid latex. And then you take, um, so you have water, latex, and then you take your third cup with house paint that you go to the hardware store, and you get mixed up. Like you say, oh, I want this color house paint, right? I want this flesh tone house paint. So they mix that for you, and then you take a third cup of that, and you mix those all together in a big batch. And then you airbrush that onto your mask or brush it on or whatever. But that's one way to do cheaper, uh, more cost. If you don't want to use Prose because it can be expensive, you can just use that method. And that works great, actually. Oops, sorry. Weird noises. Uh, it's not my, it's the ceramic coat. The, yeah, man, these things... <laughs> Stepped on a duck. All right, so I'm just 
that was white. That's off white. I don't know why I'm even doing that. Just follow me here. I'm just making stuff up. Um, I'm going to put some of this gray in just to tone things down. Actually, let's do that after. Let's do some. Let's. Do I want to go Nosferatu blue or. Ah, let's do somewhere in the middle. I don't like it to be too blue. It looks silly. It's like too blue. I'm going to make it fleshy blue. Sorry, these bottles like to fart. It's acrylic fart bottles. All right. So we'll just, I'm just making it up, guys. I'm making something up here. I don't know. I kind of like that already. Kind of a weird gray green thingy going on here. Kind of a cool vampire look. Yeah. I'm looking for a dead pale color. So whatever we get is what we get. But yeah, you can mix up your flesh tone or whatever you want to mix up. Works for me. It's cool. It's dead. It's creepy. It'll work. Put lots of layers over it. So uh yeah, so you mix that up, and then uh, is this brush going to be better, or is this brush going to be better? Uh, let's see, do we have, oh, and I feel like there's paint in here or something. This is... Uh, alcohol in this bottle i'm just seeing if there's something some paint or something in this brush because it feels very stiff clean it out real quick so the next step will be to add um Prosade glue, your your glue to your paint. So it's very simple to do this. Um, I'll just start with this, whatever. So uh, all you do is add a little bit of this. Now I kind of just do, I don't have an exact ratio. You know, the more Prosade you add, the stickier the mask is gonna be. Uh, you don't need it to be super sticky, you just need it to be flexible but I don't mind it being a little tacky after the fact. Now I'm gonna avoid as much as I can, the gums, the teeth. I'll just go up to the lip line, you know, because the gums and teeth, I may later choose to use some of the latex as part of the underlying gum color or not, I don't know. I just don't know yet, so I always leave that. Um, but I'll base coat everything else, the eyes and everything else. So what I do is, you know, you shake up your bottle. This stuff is super sticky. <clears throat> and I'm just going to kind of fill up a little way so I have about, you know, it's mostly paint. And then I would say, like, uh, if the paint is 70%, the liquid, the glue is maybe 30% or something like that, if you need a ratio to go by. Roughly. It can be off. It doesn't need to be perfect. I just put enough glue that I know it's going to be flexible. So you don't need a ton of this glue. So a bottle like what I just showed you, which is, what is this, like 16 ounces? That'll, I know that's expensive, but that'll last you a long time. Because as you just saw, you're not using a ton of glue. But for some people, you know, even that bottle is just too expensive. I mean, it's it's not cheap. It's like, what, maybe 30 bucks or something, $32 for that bottle. So, I mean, what, you know, if you go to Home Depot or wherever and you get some house paint, you know, for 15 bucks, 17 bucks, I don't know how much 
a big can of house paint costs, but you get that and your latex and water isn't going to cost you much. So you could just mix up a giant batch of base color. And there you go. So now I'm just making sure that this is mixed well. Scraping the sides, making sure I get all that paint mixed in. All right, that looks pretty tasty. Mm, yummy. All right, so now, um, and this is just, again, this is just how to simply base coat your mask. There's other ways to base coat. There's other tricks to base coating. This is just the most straightforward, simple way I'm showing you right now, okay? Um, hey, I'm gonna, Sam, I'm gonna move this closer. Sure. I don't want you to go out of focus. But if I can get this closer to me. Is that cool? Yeah. Okay. So, dippity dip and go, go, go. So, and now we just brush this on. Yeah, it's got like a little bit of a blue undertone. I like that. Very Barlow y Nosferatu esque look. And you'll see the paint is kind of translucent. Now, the one thing is this paint will dry pretty matte, which is nice, because these uh, Delta Ceram Coat colors are usually very matte when they dry. They're usually not glossy, that I recall them ever being glossy, but yeah. So when the, at first it'll be real shiny it's wet and then it'll dry very pretty matte and you know we might have to go over a few areas that are thinner than other areas but you know what I like is these brushes as you can see just put the paint on very smooth without too many brush marks now the brush marks will smooth out on their own as the paint settles and dries but the chip brushes I was talking about earlier, they just leave a lot of brush marks and, and inconsistencies I don't really like. So I try to avoid using them. Um, and you can clean this out after. It's not like the brush is no good or it's dead or it's, you just, you, you wash it out with water and then, and then clean it with alcohol really well, scrub it out and you can even use a stiffer brush to to uh, help clean out the all the paint, and your brush will be fine to use again and again. So you don't have to go through a bunch of expensive art brushes. And this is not an expensive one; this is a cheapy. But yeah, I think this is just a watercolor, thick watercolor brush. It maybe cost four bucks or something. Ice coat and masks, man. Woo! All right. <laughs> Thinking about a live stream coming up where we're sculpting a half mask. That might be fun. Huh. That might be fun. That's been roaming in the back of my head a little bit. Mm. I like your response there. Hmm. <laughs> I'm just trying to think, like, what does that look like? <laughs> Knowing me, it would be like some kind of cycloptic monster or something. I don't know. I have no idea. But I don't know. I gotta, I have to, the reason I say that is I have a, I have to sculpt a mask for my new class in October. I'm running 
for those of you wondering about classes, I know a lot of people have been asking. I have a half mask painting workshop, one day, one day workshop coming up, learning this right here, first of all, learning, you know, you'll learn this technique, but I will also share many other secrets that I'm not sharing here, obviously. But um, it'll be a one day mask painting workshop. In fact, we might actually, we might base coat with different than this. Uh, with that class, I might be teaching the old-fashioned latex base coating because following that, I'll show students another few tricks to get their mask looking awesome right away. But anyway, regardless of all that, um, I have the class coming in October. I don't have a date yet, but I'm going to be designing a new half mask, I believe, for that class. Some sort of monster thing. I don't know what. I always like Cyclopses because they're fun, they look interesting, and there's only one eye to paint. <laughs> you don't have to worry about them looking off eye. You don't have to worry about the time it takes to paint two eyes versus one as well, which is nice. Um, yeah, yeah, you don't, and you don't have to worry about them looking cross-eyed or lopsided or freaky. No, so I'll get in these ears and, you know, all this. Some of these areas can be a little tricky to get to, so you might have to turn the mask a certain way or whatever. All right. You got to get in them nostrils. So Noble in the chat was saying, give me a corpsy cyclops. Cyclops or something? Mm, that's interesting. Corpsey Cyclops. Corpse Clops. I like that. I haven't really tackled that yet. I always try to find with a Cyclops something nobody else has done and um, make it, you know, make it like totally different than any other Cyclops I've done before. So that's definitely one I haven't done. Corpse Clops. <laughs> that's kind of a cool name. Corpse Clops. Hmm. That's a good one. Let's hear some more ideas, guys. Let's hear what you got. Let's hear let's check your your imagination out there. What are you what are you guys thinking? Give me some ideas. Throw some ideas at me. But don't make them silly. Make them good. Like really the, think about it. The first one that comes to my mind is an Oni. Onis are cool, yeah. That's a cool Oni demon. Uh huh. I haven't really done one of those either. It's weird. I've avoided my mask career for some weird reason. I was telling my wife about this. I avoided skulls and I avoided standard UFO roswell aliens type stuff but there's ways to do those interesting you know interestingly like so it just doesn't look like some standard run-of-the-mill design like you can you can tweak them and change them make them your own and but still stay true to some of it you know like a standard skull but and that's the trick that's the that's the way to do it another thing would be fun would be like a franken Stein mutate mutant thing or something weird. Um, I don't know. Let's hear what they let's hear what they've got. If anyone's got any ideas, throw them out there. Let's hear what you got. So we've got corpse clops. That's a cool. That's a cool one. Ooh, a zombie slee stack. Zombie slee stack. 
Wrightson Frankenstein. Yeah. Dracustein. Dracustein. I wonder if, is that like Mix a of... Frankenstein made up of vampires or a Frankenstein like a... that was just, or a Frankenstein's monster that was turned into a vampire? Yeah, it's like a, it's like a mashup. I had a really good mashup, and I'll share it with you guys, but you can't steal the idea from me. <laughs> you can't do it. I've think, been thinking about this for years. I have, I did a mash. Okay, so first of all, I did a mashup years ago called Hunch Hide, which was the Hunchback and Mr. Hyde. And then I have another mashup in mind that I want to do sometime when I get, when I have the time, obviously, called um, Mum Feratu. And so it's a mummy and mixed with a Nosferatu. Mum Feratu. I like the mashups of the old school monsters. That's cool. So as you can see, I'll get close to the lip here. You know, I won't worry about getting it perfect. I'll just get as close as I can without trying to get paint all over the gums. Don't steal Mumferatu. I'm staring at him. <laughs> Don't steal Mumferatu from me. <laughs> They're like, I'm sculpting it right now. <laughs> Why didn't nobody think of this before? That's so smart. That's why I didn't want to share it. I shouldn't have, I should have shut my big mouth. No. They won't. I think we've got cool loyal fans and stuff. They I don't think they're gonna they're not gonna do that. Not cool. Um Yeah, they're like snooze you lose. <laughs> um what else? Yeah. Oh, like uh, the, yeah, the fish. Yeah. Um, deep sea fish. Yeah. Yeah. Angler fish. I angler think it is. angler fish. Yeah. yeah. They have really cool wrinkles in their face, and they just look aggressively evil at all times. They do not have a friendly look to them ever. They're just full on, like wrinkled and just pissed off. <laughs> Those things are cool. So. As I wind down on this base coating, uh, I mean, well, I'm going to go over a few more or another you know, layer in certain areas here, but I'm getting close to finishing. At least you guys have seen cleanup, prep, uh, taking away things you don't want on your mask, patching holes. So a whole good amount of info on how I get ready for painting a mask. So once I reach this point here, I kind of like to let it dry just for a few. What kind? Of, what time we got? Uh... Oh, about ten to eight right now. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna let this dry a little, and we'll take a few. Quick questions. I'm just going to base coat a little more up here really quick where it's really thin. But we could take a few, couple quick questions, and then I'll just finish the base coating off for the end of the show. So you can go whenever you're ready if there's any questions out there. Or if not, if there's no questions, if they've got some mask ideas, I'd love to hear what they're thinking. Yeah, we actually do have one question right here from Joe Noble. Okay. Uh, how often do you brush your base coats versus airbrushing? Uh, I used to airbrush them all the time, which required thinning the mixture and all this. And But I don't know. Um, it, it was only if I was trying to achieve a more translucent base coat look, which you can do on latex as well so i i used to do it a lot and now i 
kind of do this most of the time now. I mostly just base coat like this with a brush just because it's way faster than an airbrush and easier and you don't run into clogging and issues because it's a glue. So, um, yeah, pretty much don't airbrush base coats too much anymore. I just don't see it necessary. And then, um, you know, you can just do a bunch of really nice layers to get the translucency that you're looking for in the end. So, uh, yeah, so most of the time it's this. But that's not to say that I won't, you know, on a specific mask or something that's like if it's if I, if it's a mask that needs really translucent skin, then I would go back and thin it and airbrush it and do all that. And that's that's a whole different process, a little bit of a different process to do. There's one person here is mentioning uh, their recommendation on what it should be that you paint next or or what is it they offering their insight on like what's a good mashup of something they're saying dracula mixed with a buck tooth puffer fish <laughs> yeah you know, I'm, I'm like the deep sea thing has got me thinking like a mermaid would be sweet like yeah, a, just yeah. a straight up mermaid or a siren or <laughs> a buck tooth puffer fish with dracula that just sounds like like my mind immediately goes to uh like that what's that anime car um anime movie hotel transylvania yep my mind just immediately goes to that cartoony vibe of like hotel transylvania i don't i don't know if i can like actually sculpt that seriously and like make it realistic and scary like the trick would be how do you make that scary mm -hmm. you know like how do you keep it from getting silly there's a way. I mean, that would be that would be the challenge for sure. I think it it would probably be dependent on how you do the eyes, because it's like the teeth would be buck tooth and kind of odd looking. But if you make the eyes like just inhumane enough, you could probably turn like make it unsettling. Like oh shit! Like yeah, because it's gotta have that like disturbing realistic factor to it, and that would be um, a little tricky. Because, uh, well, you'd have to also avoid what makes that fish look a little silly like that. Because uh -huh. I'm thinking of it, it's like a big buck toothy thing. Yeah, the lips are all big and protruding. Yeah. And it's like, so you would take, you would go the opposite, you know, like with those features in a way. Like, still get the vibe of the teeth sticking out and all that, but go, but, but, but take it back, you know. One of the creepy things I always think is when something has a lot of gums and smaller teeth, tiny, sharp teeth and a lot of gums, that's that's always creepy looking mm. to me. Ooh, you know what? I'm thinking of it now. It's like with the puffer fish with its teeth being like pushed out, its lips being pushed out, you could like have them be almost pushed in. And then yeah. when it opens its mouth to bite somebody, its teeth actually drag along its mouth and like pop out. Yeah. Almost like, oh. That would wig me out, for sure. <laughs> There's a couple other people who are, who are uh, mentioning Nosferatu, just Don Knotts as a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> Again, that's where we're we're going down more of the caricature style yeah. thing. Somebody's mentioning a Mothman alien, just a straight up Mothman alien, yeah. or a mashup between an alien gray and an, and a spider. So instead of one eye, you're doing eight. Alien gray and a spider. Yeah, that could be interesting. I always like to try to not just also mash things together, but like try to figure out other, bring in other elements to make it, you know, whether it's human or human elements or whatever to make it, um, as interesting as possible. Getting underneath right. here where I can't see. Jason Jack and Eddie actually has a question as well. Oh, okay. uh, Jason asks, a lot of Casey's pieces have large teeth that push out. Yes. That is like his trademark. Was that inspired by the mass he liked at a young age or from something else? Um, 
no, it, it wasn't. It wasn't totally inspired by any mask at a young age or any of that. Um, I I do know what he means. I definitely have a style of teeth being pushed out, and I do that a lot. And I just think it's creepy. I, I I've always felt it's creepy and weird, and um, and like this one is very extreme, obviously, where the teeth are just the gums are sticking out and. It's it's like pushing the, the the whole thing about this mask right here. The whole thing that I was thinking about was what would if if a vampire had something like Barlow looking kind of kind of Barlow esque uh, vibe. If you took that and it was like kind of the scene out of American Werewolf in London where where the head starts pushing out and transforming. So in other words, this would start to transform towards more of a bat creature or something weird. Um, the idea was like, how do I capture that a, a moment in time where it looks like the mouth is starting to push out, like a, like a transformation head does. And that's what I was trying to capture with this was that weird moment in time where it's like start just starting to change. That's what this was idea um like how can i do a barlow type thing different than say and, and it's not going to be a copy of salem's lot but something else you know but still vampire and human and but then it's got this element where the mouth is starting to stretch this way and push and the nostrils are stretching and so i just wanted to kind of capture that uh vibe sort of thing so anyway that's where this came from but yeah, I know a lot of the a lot of my work. Uh, some of it can have you know an underbite with a lot of gums. I did a cyclops with a huge, huge underbite, a lot of gums and teeth. And I do do those things a lot because I just find them interesting. In in in, and I don't know what what it is about it, but it just I think it's it's weird and creepy and interesting. So I just, I guess that's why I just do it all the time. <laughs> I do those things. Um, but I always still try to find, like, like you won't see me do this exact thing again um, on another vampire, a hundred percent. Like, like, like the la the the one I did before this, or I, the one I did after this, was a half mask, and it had little tiny teeth. The gums were pushing out, but not nowhere near this this extreme. And then it had tiny little teeth, and the eyes were more alien and stuff. So I. I try to always change it too, you know, like I try not to use the exact thing again uh, that I used on another mask, if that makes sense. So uh, the idea might be the same idea, but then how do I make that idea different? I always try that. It's, it's hard because you're trying to always um, come up with something fresh and new for the mask that, that, that you're designing. So that's the challenge is... I never want any of my masks, like from one to the next, to look like the same thing, or like they were designed a hundred percent by um, some plan or or stylistic feature that I always do over and over again. I, it's hard to explain, but I I basically try to make them different one to the next as much as I can. <laughs> I mean, it's hard, but I try. <laughs> so. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we've got a few masks sitting around that I've done. So uh, I don't think they can see any of those. Anyway, but no that's... above now. Yeah. Um, yeah. The hide one's a good one, though. The hide. This one right here? Yeah, that one's cool. We could pull that, we could pull that down. Show them. That's a good one. Yeah, this is a... This is a cool one I did for a Halloween costume, and I did a class on this one year. It was like a like a transforming Mr. Hyde thing, and I think this was br very briefly shown. I don't think you can really see it because he used in a music video. Ah, his eyebrows are coming out. Um, but yeah, this is a this is a man. I should I should open up the show with this on, right? Startling.
Welcome to Monday Night Monster Jam. <laughs> Everybody be like, sound? Sound? Where's the sound? Yeah, you know, from here, you can't really tell that that's, uh, you can't really tell that's a mask. Yeah, that's why I designed this to kind of hide, you the know, scene. and yeah. I painted it, the skin I painted kind of to try to match my skin a little bit. I don't I think I got some base coat from, I don't know. <laughs> So anyway, um, but we're just goofing off tonight. Anyway, that's that's a nice half mass. But um, yeah, uh, I think that's gonna do her. So what what'll happen with this? Even though it looks glossy on camera right now, and that's because it's so wet from the second base coat. Um, as this paint dries, like I said, it'll become. Uh, very matte and it'll have a tackiness left over from the glue but it'll be totally 100 percent flexible well you could flex the mask in half and it's not the paint the base coat's not going to crack and that's really what you're after is a flexible base coat um the downfall with this i'll tell you guys you can't really do alcohol rub outs uh because Alcohol is the one thing that will um, take the prosate, can take the prosate off if you rub hard enough uh, through it. It takes a bit of work, but it can. So the one advantage that the latex base coating I told you guys about where you mix one part latex, one part water, one part house paint, when you base coat a mask using that, you can do the rub out trick just fine with like 70 percent alcohol or whatever and and you can put paint on in the cracks and wipe it all away and it'll, the color will stay in the cracks for you so you could do those alcohol rub outs really easy with with that method so that's another good way to go and it's obviously much cheaper too because you get a gallon of color but the only disadvantage is you got to go to the hardware store every time you need a color and you got to know what color you need mm -hmm. That's the disadvantage. Like, so you'd have to buy, but you know, you can always buy just small cans, pints or quarts or whatever. So you don't have to do mix up a whole thing of just one color. But if you're doing a lot of flesh tones or something, like you're doing a run of masks and it's all flesh color, I mean, then it's worth your time to do it. So, um, and then once again, like when this is, you know, when you're ready to, to clean your brush out, just put it in a little tub of alcohol and clean it off and all, all the paint will come off um, and clean. You can get your brush really clean. And so you can use it again. Um, and you saw how nice it doesn't leave a bunch of brush marks, which is really, really nice um, compared to like a chip brush, which can leave all these brush marks. Like even though they're not like marks that are raised or anything, they, they do settle out, but it does. I've seen it where it leaves like that. And of course, chip brushes always leave, bristles everywhere sticky you gotta pick them all out i, I just hate chip brushes <laughs> i yeah hard <laughs> so them, hard to get them in nook and, nooks and crannies too yeah like, you know. it, yeah and the bristles are just kind of stiff too stiff so i really do recommend trying to base coat your mask with a soft brush you'll it's night and day compared to a chip brush it really works well um so there you have it that's tonight's lesson from monday night monster jam and all of us here um all of us all two of all us. the two of us all yeah. the two of us <laughs> you know there's a whole crew you don't see we're fancy like that no um again guys thank you so much for your support with the stream um we will do the giveaway uh pretty soon that we talked about once we hit the thousand so we will get uh, I'm gonna. I gotta get to work and cast all these up for everybody, and we'll and I'll paint them up, and, you know, do some paint jobs on them real quick, and and then we'll do the drawing real soon. We'll let you guys know when that's coming up. Maybe we'll do it next stream or so. We'll get to the drawing and pick those lucky ten subscribers that are gonna win a set. So um, as always, like and subscribe. Hopefully uh, you guys have learned something new tonight or I've helped you with maybe solve a problem or two or whatever. This is a question I get asked so often. So I wanted to really just get right to it and show it 
um, and try to take away the mystery of it all. If hopefully I did that for you. If not, you know, oh well. Um, <laughs> you got to watch me base coat something in blue for two hours. Hmm. <laughs> so uh, yeah, be careful with these techniques too. Uh, use caution. Use um, proper ventilation. If you're using a burning tool, do not burn yourself. Be very careful with that thing because um, we are not going to take any responsibility if you get hurt. So be cautious. Use proper ventilation. Do some of these things outside. Don't leave your burner plugged in ever. Don't walk away from it. Turn it off. And just be smart about it all. And um, thank you again, Sam. Thank you yep. again for always kicking butt behind the hard stuff because mm. you truly do the hard stuff. I just have fun over here. <laughs> <laughs> And, um, yeah, hopefully, again, you guys had a great 4th of July. Thank you for tuning yes. in. We will catch you next Monday night for the next number, episode 16. i got to keep these straight in my head. Um, we might go back to sculpting. I don't know yet. I'm wanting to get back to some sculpting. We'll see where we get to. We'll, we'll see what we come up with for that show. <laughs> and if you have any suggestions or things, you can drop those in on the YouTube channel, or you can drop it on the Monday Night Monster Jam Facebook page. If you didn't know that, we have one. You can go there and join, become a member, and share your work, or just see all the cool work going on that everybody else is sharing. And uh, what are we up to now? There, like 700? Sub, sub, uh, not 700 uh, subscribers, 700 members? 800 yeah, members? I believe so. 700? Yep. We're getting up there in members there, too. So that's great. And... um uh next week we'll get back to artist share again at seven o'clock sorry we didn't do that tonight i just wanted to make sure i could show you guys 100 percent the base coding process and that's it from us i think you guys enjoy the rest of your monday night uh keep jamming on whatever you're creating or making in your own studio and uh if you have any other questions drop them on the monday night monster jam facebook page uh again you can catch us there you can catch me on my Instagram, Casey Love Designs, Facebook page, Casey Love, and uh, of course, Monday Night Monster Jam on YouTube. If you want to check out other content, please check out our other videos. We have now 15, 16 of them up there. There's plenty to watch and see and learn, and there you have it. Cool. Thank you for joining in, guys. Have a great Monday night. We'll see you soon. Later, everyone. Bye-bye.